próximo. Well, hello, it's Jim with this, man. You're welcome back to another little Gimla battle. This is uh, the secret advisor, Kovrax, official submission. So we did a battle, uh, was it last or the week before? We battled the Hollywood class, which you have seen before on the channel, with glorious footage. You must check that out if you haven't already, of course. This is the very, very, very nice new ship, which has a very interesting name. That's Exerfire, CBX Exerfire. Anyways, as you can see, uh, we had some limitations and stuff. Um, so, basically, what Kovrax has done is kept inside 100,000 blocks, which is usually uh, the issue, according to him. Because uh, he likes to build really big uh, papier mache type builds. We still got a lot of wooden tetras if there is a place where the armor is not needed. Well, he just figures why not just use wooden tetras to fill out that space. Which you can absolutely do. So, uh, this basically means that uh, Kovrax has, or the secret advisor has come with another building style. You can see that the wooden armor has been reinforced with loads of stone. <coughs> We have spread out stone chests with ammo and stuff, and we got our turret next, and we got loads of cannons. Now, I think this is cram, but I think we should, yes. <laughs> I think I think Gimli is gonna get uh, a, a bit dose of its own medicine here. Narrow fragmentation angle, or not narrow, but 30, 23 degrees. High explosive frag. Okay. Well, we're gonna pitch this against the Gimli and we're gonna see the results. So I don't know if it has much interiors. We're gonna check it out. We have some beautiful decoration on the superstructure here. Looks very professional ship-like. The only thing that's off is that it's all wood. Look at that, looking pretty neat. Wait, what? We have showers and oh, we have sleeping uh, nets here. Isn't that quite nice? So we got some cool interiors there. Not much in terms of control panel. I suppose that the uh, maximum block count ran out. Oh, look at that. That's some really cool ammo boxes here. So we've got some decorative ammo boxes. Above that, well, that's very nice. So this is basically not only diff guns, what the secret advisor usually brings to the table, but these are some sieves APS. We got some targeting. Here we have a diff gun, right? What do you bring to the table? Flak! Oh, are we having diff flags? I do believe we have. So we got a couple of diff flags. Oh, and we got some... Oh, isn't that some trickery mortars to... Uh, trying and uh, to try and trick the gimless lambs to do unnecessary work? This is obviously a right sider as well. So we're gonna have right sider against right sider. Well, gonna be very interesting to see this one indeed. Looking very beautiful, this ship. I like it a lot, the decorations here. It looks super cool. Do we have a torpedo on board or do we just have some torpedoes laying around here? I don't know why. Maybe a turret got removed to save costs? I don't know, it feels like there was some other turrets here. I have absolutely no idea. This is a cool boat. Let's get this battle started. There we have, the battle is on, and you can see it's not like the Hollywood class ship, but it's still a pretty darn big ship. Now, a lot of the battles between the Gimle, the Gimle is the bigger and bulkier ship, but in this case it is bulkier, but it's a good bit shorter, not as long. 
Look at this thing here. Look at it go. It's pretty quick too. Yeah, so... So... Yeah, so the secret advisor Corvax has really spent a lot of firepower on the Exerfire. Oh, 27 seconds into the battle. And the Gimle is down to 88 percentages. What happened here? Man, look at that. We have one turret just nuked out of its place. I do believe that's one of the first times that happens at all. We got some stormy weather to counter with this too. The laser is lazen. We have some re <laughs> Does this even count as armor? <laughs> that's so thin. Yeah, well that's uh, that's uh, that's Kovrax building style right there. And that's a great inspiration for the Gimle by the way. I've been thanks to his designs, I've been able to upgrade my uh, building quality a lot, I will just have to say that. He's a really good builder and these are some really strong ones. Game list down to 86 percentages and the secret advisor's Exer Fire is still at 95. Oh, look at that! Man, that's not fun to see. Holy crap, that's some explosions, man. Wow, this turret is almost... Look at it! Poor thing! We had like a big explosion inside of here too. I'm just happy the AI ain't dead yet, ain't dead yet but it's only been like one minute. This is absolutely the fastest battle so far. And oh, I almost forgot. Exerfire, she brings mortars too. She brings mortars to the table too, so we're gonna see some mortars raining down here any second. I just realized I forgot to uh, switch the quality of the game to... Man, that's some scary stuff. Yeah, so we're, 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 we're playing this in like super nice quality now, uh, this first battle. Which is why we have a lot worse FPS than normal. Because, of course, there is a reason behind my rules, uh, and there is a reason behind... Oh, uh, mortars! There is a reason behind uh, that I also uh, put the game to the lowest settings before starting a battle. Right, we're coming in here. Oh, those flak diffrods, they're not able to take out... Oh, poor thing, look at it. It just died. It just died. Yeah, no way. This this is not looking good for the Gimla at all. I do think that Kovrax with the Exerfire has been able to out the Gimla the Gimla very much. Oh, we could take out that cram at least. Man. It's spending loads of materials too. That has to be sad, man. And it's much more compact here, so I do believe that the secret advisor has been going for maximum firepower just to be able to not die quickly. Mortars actually reached their mark here. Now, they are kind of only whole point, of course. They remove a lot of the shells. A lot of the hole there, but they don't deal that much damage, actually. Look at that. We have exterior turret armor, and then we have... We have, like, an uh, exterior cylinder, and then we have an interior cylinder in the cylinder with the turret. So it's really well built there. Turret necks and all that stuff that I don't really do, which is probably a good idea. No! The Exerfire is down to 88 percentages. So, the Gimli is severely handicapped with its turrets, but so does... Look at that, man. This turret ain't coming around to taunt us anymore. Something is like... something happened there. 
And we got some... Oh, man. Look at that. More more cramps are coming in from Exer Fire. Oh, I see the lag. What's happening there? Ah, we can't take it out. <laughs> it went out and took out the other side. Are you kidding me? I'm just surprised my AI isn't scratched a bit. I think that's just pure luck. Looks like so many of our turrets and stuff is just so disabled, but somehow we're able to use our broadside laser to kind of laser a little bit. That's nice. Um, I'm hoping that the extra bulk from the gimlet will lead us to victory, but I do believe it's gonna be pretty hard at this point. And we got mortars here too, do mind that, but they are not hitting very much, you know. Despite what you might think, the Gimli is actually decently fast, it goes at about, like, now this is, top speed is very sad, but it's ish 40 meters per second. A little bit less usually, because it's turning. But if it's not turning, it's 40 meters per second. I do think I remember that. It was a little bit faster and maneuverable before, but I had to save some uh, power uh, and cost and stuff to keep my firepower. But I'm actually thinking of, if I upgrade the gimbal sometime, I'm thinking about, about making it more maneuverable. Because one of the issues with the gimbal is that it gets completely, like, outmaneuvered. Um, or it can be sometimes. Uh, and uh, if it was more maneuverable, it will not show its weak side towards the enemy, which would be a great benefit. Oh? What are these lags? What's happening there? Alright. What's going on here? I do wonder what's going on. We got some big uh, explosions inside. Now, now the Gimli is down to 67 percentages. This is some funny business. That I will have to say. Uh, but the Exer Fire is down to 76 percentages. We got a big cramp popping in here. It missed. It missed. Another one. It missed. Ah, we're so inaccurate. Look at that. That was just a decoy cramp. Now, the secret advisor obviously just skips having defenses usually. I don't know what these Civs cannon did. If they did anything, I don't know if they did. But if they did anything, it wasn't probably much. They seem to have been stuck to. Why are they stuck? Boom, we got a big cramp popping in there. Okay, this is actually interesting. The Exeter Fire is... She's only 10% in the lead. And the gameplay is still shooting some of its crams, so this could flip. Look at that. What's... Oh, it's the engine back here. Oh my god. This ain't spinning at all. One of them. There are many. We're firing blanks! Ooh. I still do think that the Exer Fire will win this first battle because, um, well, it's been in the lead for long here. But we shall see. Only five minutes in game battle. Well, this is one rare chance you will have. You will see a nice-looking battle with nice graphic settings because, thanks to my rules, the battles don't lag that much. But uh, they still lag a little bit if I don't turn down the settings to minimum, which I wanted to tell you before. Oh, did we have some EMP damage, mind? Oh yes, I do think we got that. Or probably, maybe, I don't think 
Kovrax would forget to EMP insulate his turrets. But if he did, it might be the difference between losing and winning this particular battle. Interesting. Uh, there, was, there is a lot of big frags on the Gimlet too. So it's quite likely that some of the frags just got in and hit somewhere important. Man. One, two... Like, a lot of these turrets are not actually online. My god, I, we actually have a chance of winning this. This is pretty insane. Alright. Oh, bam. Damn. Well, the Gimle is not far away from the spawning, I believe, but... Oh, look, the Exer fire is down to its only 3% difference now. Anything can happen at this point. This is only the first battle, of course. Best of three it is, but man, this is exciting. Oh no, don't tell me we're gonna miss this one too. Uh, oh, it was a decoy cram. Never mind, we might as well have missed that one. Alright. Oh, one turret actually dropped off. That's what happened. Bam, we're missing crams. Bam, that's a proper hit. Still, uh, the Exit Fire has a 3% lead. But the laser has. Has it been along for a long. Has it been online for a long time? Because I think this laser could be the difference between winning and losing, too. Man. It's gonna aim towards hot blocks. Now, I don't actually think that Kovrax has missiles. I guess this is... I haven't seen them in that case. I think this is only to... To kind of trick the the uh, smoke dispensers to activate so that uh, the lambs can get weakened. <clears throat> All right. Look at this thick bricks of stone. That's a really interesting. That's like big stone sandwiches right there. Bam! That's an explosion. Are you kidding me? <laughs> This secret advisor, Kovrax Exer Fire, doesn't shoot back anymore. Look at the poor thing. The Gimle actually succeeded in winning the first battle. It really did. Amazing. That's surprising. Well, the tables turned, but that was a, that was a big surprise, man. That was a big surprise because uh, the Exer Fire she was in the lead for like the entire battle. Welp. Yeah, it doesn't shoot back. Well, it's a victory for the game level. We're moving on to the next round. The second battle is online. So we're gonna see what happens here. Gimli is desperately trying to turn. I wanna see this uh, from the Gimli's perspective. Ooh, was that some stuff exploding? Was that Gimli's cramps exploding there? Bam! Look at that barrage, man. Oh, lords, that ain't too good. Oh, wow, we're having lag spikes. Like never seen before. Rest of Gimlet scans come around. I just wanna see if the AI. It took a scratching. It took a scratching. Oh, that looked like another one. This. Ah. Uh, no? Okay. Never mind. We're gonna shield on top of here. So the Gimli is down to 92 percentages and the Exer Fire is at 97. So we're doing a lot better, ain't we? Yes, we are. 
I'm gonna check out what... Whoa! Big... <laughs> what are these guys doing? They're actually shoot. We're, we're like in degraded mood, I suppose. So I'm not 100% what these guys are doing, but I suppose they're shooting down at incoming crams or something. And these discs in the middle... Like, what are they for? So it's an armored disc... With four meter... It looks like a platform you could place a turret on or something. But it... It contains hidden smoke. I wonder if it's like some smoke combo. There should probably be some heat decoy behind here, right? Oh! <laughs> that smoked heat decoys! That's so intelligent! That's so smart! So, um,. The secret advisor kind of knew that, maybe knew, I don't know, he could have checked the lasers of the Gimla and see that they are targeting hot blocks. So what is what is provided is a hot block slab in the middle, in the middle where there is absolutely nothing important. There is a thick slab of uh, just four meter with like stone, a lot of smoke decoys and heat, no, a lot of smoke dispenser and heat decoys. <clears throat> and they are obviously there to super trick my lasers to not grill anything important. Well, that's, that's uh, A plus for intelligence. Wow. That's smart. Okay, so the Exer fire is in the lead by four, pr oh, only five percentages? What's happening over the Gimli here? No matter how this battle goes, the secret advisor should know that his designs have greatly helped me be able to build better. That, that just has to be said. My god, a shot near the AI would be devastating. <clears throat> Absolutely devastating. Gimli is at 76 percentages. Exit fire is at 84. The lambs are actually able to take out. Never mind. Oh, damn! That almost deleted the AI. Look at that. Oh my god, another one. We have our auxiliary AI components here that are just fried. We're sinking. Oh no! I know! Oh yeah, right! So... So, the ACBs that are controlling the altitude of the Gimle, they are taken out. So now the Gimle resides on the altitude set by the AI, which is a lot lower. Oh man, that ain't good for all of the guns. Now the sniper cannons, they only shoot at underwater block anyway, so they couldn't care less, but... <laughs> Maybe this, weirdly enough, could have been good for the game. I don't know, we shall see. As long as we're not sinking because we're losing power or sinking too much. <clears throat> That's some boom. I'm, I, I am a little bit surprised that uh, the Exeter Fire does not have some auxiliary uh, diff guns. Now I did forbid like <sighs> bringing like 200 diff guns on a turret to the battle to win. Uh, like I did ban that because if you have diff guns in the numbers of like several hundred ones, uh, it will lag so much when they fire that it's like impossible to have battles. <clears throat> so I did ban that, otherwise I do think Corvax would have been bringing some of those uh, scary diff guns. But diff, diff guns are obviously not banned completely. 
So I am a little bit surprised that Corvax does not have diff guns for auxiliary damage dealing. Like the Gimla has, I think it is two, three diff guns or something that actually deals damage. And that can help giving uh, some, uh, that can like help giving some early advantage because you can have Hesh and stuff and the heat on diff guns and those rods can be able to kill enemy turrets. So if you have a couple of those in the start, bam, that's a good hit. Uh, it can help you have an advantage in the battle. So I was actually thinking that uh, the secret advisor would bring a few diff guns just to you know, <clears throat> have a good time. Look at that, those cramps are actually bouncing off the Gimli, which is like, see me submerged. <clears throat> but I guess uh, the secret advisor is wanna be all in or all out. Either, I, either it's diff guns 100% or there are no diff guns. We have a front turret that's missing, that ain't good. And this is basically missing too, so we have some really handicapped firepower here. This Arquebalista is not shooting scary shells anymore. Yeah. Ooh, scary stuff. 66 versus 73 percentages. We're at the same level as before. This can go either way. Bam, that's a big... Damn, we don't have much forward propulsions anymore. Uh, we're close to this spawning. No kidding. Bam, that's a big one. Cram parts. So, the weak point of the Exeter Fire seems to be the cram cannons. Boom. It seems that the heat decoy is now grilled away, so now it starts to shoot at other stuff. It would be lovely if those lasers started to target, uh, I don't know turrets instead, not just empty space. 63 percentages, we're still having a good amount of cram cannons here on the extra far still firing, so it's a little bit scary, right? It Right now it looks like the extra fire will win this. It really does, trying to be optimistic, but man. Lucky! Man. That our ACB block controlling the altitude of the Gimle got taken out might be the luckiest thing that has happened. Because you know what this will do? This will make it so that our engine power is like not prioritized to keep uh, our altitude. Which means that our laser will be a lot stronger than it should be at this stage of the battle. Because obviously like almost half our blocks are missing now. 38% of our blocks are already gone, basically. <clears throat> Probably more. Probably 50% of our blocks are already gone. It's just that not all health is equal when it comes to blocks. I'm, do I'm happy that our defenses are able to take out some of those cram shots, but man, not all of them. Ah. Did you see that underwater? I think we have underwater diff rods. That's funny. What is our laser doing under, under here then? The Exer fire has reached the funny number of 69. Well, what, what does it mean? Bam. Our cramps are still hitting hard. This one doesn't have no barrels, no. It's firing blanks then. So the weak point really is its turrets. This one is on line 100%. 
Maybe not 100, but a lot of percentages. This one too. This one too. But the laser is finally dealing lasing damage, which is nice. Look at that. That turret is definitely offline. Now we're targeting what? Yes, we're targeting one of the healthy cannons. Oh, it doesn't have any connectors left. That turret is effectively disabled. Gimli's at 60% though, a few cram shots or a lucky one to the AI will of course make it the Gimli lose. I'm just uh, staying over here, being optimistic and not assessing the damage that's done to the Gimli because it feels better that way. Also, you've seen the Gimli enough. What's lagging? Oh my god! About AI hit? I do believe that the Gimli deleted Exer Fire's AI. Who would have thought? I would not have thought that the extra fire would lose this battle because I know how good of a builder the secret advisor is. He builds ships that beats most ships at the same material range. But I guess that my rules that you can't bring, bring 200 diff guns to this fight because it will lag too much and it, you can only use 100,000 blocks uh, threw him off guard a little bit because that's like literally what he does brings 1 million blocks to the game and uh, 100,000 diff guns if he can, and that just is a good way to deal damage. Well, that was really unexpected. The game looked like it was losing both battle, but it, it won in the end. And I will ascribe some of those wins to pure luck because man, it looked like it would go the other way. But this is best of three and this is our result. So, good game. The Secret Advisor, Kovrax, the Extra Fire, beautiful build. That was a strong one. I do think it would beat all the enemies that the Gimli has already beaten without a doubt, probably. Uh, it's very, it looks very strong. It is very strong. Uh, it brought down the Gimlet to almost despawning. And I don't know if it was luck or I don't know if Gimlet just has a slight edge, but that was close. In any case, huge thanks for watching. I do hope you had liked this little video. Join the army of Jim Edison by self-assigning Matru's third class in our Discord. If you don't want to be a commissioned officer, because then you need to go to Patreon. In any case, huge thanks for watching. This is your host, Jim Odesman. I'll be seeing you in some future battles. And yes, do like and subscribe. See you.